welcome to Hong Kong. Here at the Asian Investment Conference, we took the opportunity to sit in on one of the monthly meetings of the Credit Suisse Global Economics and Strategy Group, in short, the GSG. The GSG is where all the heads of the worldwide Credit Suisse research units come together to pool their knowledge and to develop in-depth views on the global economy. The meeting is headed by Giles Keating, the chairman of the GSG. Giles, what were the main points of discussion at this month's meeting? Well, there was a, a big discussion about what's going on in the world economy and, and, of course, the markets. And I'd say the tone was fairly constructive. Uh, I think people feel that uh, the economic expansion, uh, although it's coming from a very low level, uh, has actually been proceeding well uh, and, uh, and running at quite a fast rate over recent months. And looking forward... Uh, I think we see it broadening out, becoming deeper and more sustainable. So, for example, jobs beginning to rise in Asia, in, in America and in Europe. And here in Asia, the economy is still running at a very good pace. Um, and if anything, we think other people are perhaps still a little bit too pessimistic about the outlook. Usually this meeting is held in Zurich. Now this month it was held here in Hong Kong at the Asian Investment Conference. What were the most striking findings of the meeting with regard to the Asian economies? Uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, Dong Tao, uh, who of course is the, the chief economist for the region here in the Investment Bank, uh, and he was able to join the meeting uh, along with our, our normal participants such, such as uh, Neil Soss and Andrew Garthwaite, Jonathan Wilmot, uh, 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 and uh, Stefan Keitel and, and others. And uh, he was uh, giving us his view of the Chinese economy. He certainly thinks for the time being the expansion can continue. Um, he does give us a warning that next year he thinks some of the very high rate of loans uh, may cause uh, some problems for local authority lending. Uh, but even then he thinks that uh, whatever problems come from that can be dealt with quite quickly. I think Hong Kong itself is potentially more of an issue. Not straight away, and in fact we think that the, that the price uh, boom can actually run for a while longer, but the problem in Hong Kong is of course it imports its interest rates from America and its economic growth from China. And that is just a, you know, that's a marriage that doesn't work. More than 3,000 investors, politicians and corporates have enrolled for the AIC this year. What do you think are their expectations? Well, I think the, this conference has actually gained more and more traction over the years. It's now in its 13th year. And what's happened is that the, uh, the quality was always very high. But I think we've now reached the point of kind of critical mass where the, 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 the level of some of the speakers in terms of their level in the political system uh, has just become so high that I think that then brings yet more people in. It's like a snowball which rolls down and attracts more and more to it. And that creates a great buzz here. Uh, and it also allows us, I think, to gauge what's going on in the economies and to look at the investment opportunities in the region in a very special way. Speaking of investment opportunities, one of the topic was infrastructure. Does this mean that investors should buy in on Asian uh, highways and, and airports? Well, I think infrastructure is very important. And certainly we've seen some of the governments in the region, particularly China, use infrastructure spending as a way of uh, helping to bring their economies very rapidly out from the crisis. Um, and of course, uh, that infrastructure does indeed present investment opportunities, both here in Asia and, of course, in some of the companies in Europe and America that supply uh, the products that are needed to, to help with the infrastructure. Uh, but in addition, over the medium term, it, it, it helps to boost the growth rate. For example, in China, it, it helps to mean that the, some of the interior, some of the parts of the country away from the coastal regions, as they get better access by road and railway and air, it allows their consumption to go up as well as their production, and that will help to broaden China. So it less becomes a country that's just producing goods to sell uh, to Americans and to Europeans, and more uh, an economy which has its own very vibrant consumption sector. Another topic was the rise of the Asian middle class and the effect of the increased life expectancy. How can investors profit from that? Well, I think it does mean that the companies selling 
into the Asian consumer are, are really going to see their markets growing rapidly over the next several years. And that, of course, benefits, again, a number of companies in Europe and America, for example, ones supplying luxury goods, um, a, 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 as well as some supplying technology goods. But it also uh, will benefit local companies here in Asia, uh, and uh, particularly ones which are gradually building up their expertise in the consumer sector. That hasn't been a, such a big business in the past. We think it will become very big in future. Now, we know that China and India have been driving growth in Asia. Um, will there be an, an economy, an Asian economy, that will surprise us with its growth for this year? I think one of the countries which people perhaps outside of the region don't pay enough attention to is Indonesia. Indonesia, after all, has a quarter of a billion people, uh, making it one of the world's largest uh, countries in terms of numbers of people. Um, and uh, its economy has really been doing very well uh, over the last two or three years. Uh, the, the political situation is, is, is really much more stable than it was, looking, I think, uh, from an outside perspective, good. And there's a real dynamism. It's one of the countries that I myself visit quite frequently. There's a real dynamism in that economy, a real sense that uh, it's beginning to broaden out away from its previous uh, commodity-focused base. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, there are many exciting uh, opportunities in the Asian region, but I think Indonesia is perhaps one which investors from outside often underestimate, don't pay enough attention to. So if you had to wrap up both the findings of the GESG meeting and the most important results of the Asian Investment Conference, how would you wrap that all up for investors? Well, I think we are uh, positive about stock markets. Uh, for the time being. Uh, we do think that investors have still been too cautious. They're underestimating the economic growth. They're perhaps worried about equity valuations, which we're not. We think equity valuations look pretty fair. So we think there is significant further upside for, for equities from here. Uh, the same for commodities, which although they've gone up a lot, Uh, we believe can benefit still from this continued economic expansion. So those two asset classes we'd both be looking for, and within the equity sector we would see very good opportunities uh, here in Asia. In fact, China is one of our preferred markets, and I think that's been confirmed uh, by much that's been said here at the, at the conference. Uh, the one area where we'd perhaps be more cautious is on the fixed income side, uh, where over time... Uh, as uh, countries move towards more monetary tightening, uh, we do think that uh, you won't be seeing those same kind of returns that you see in inequities and in commodities. Thank you, Giles.